All right, all of my Star Warriors. It is Jedi Battlemaster Kos, and I have returned to you from beyond the grave, I guess. <laughs> Just to give you a little review of my favorite, well, one of my favorite Transformers movies, newest Transformers Rise of the Beast. I told you guys a while back that I would hit you up with this review, and I am a man of my word. It doesn't matter how long it takes to fulfill that. I will do it. And so, here we go. Because I love you, my fans, and I appreciate you all. And I try my best. And uh, just shoot the breeze about stuff that I like, I guess. So, with Rise of the Beasts, as opposed to Beast Wars, the story, it's a combination of both Beast Wars as well as uh, G1 and I believe Transformers Armada, it's an Energon, where they race across the galaxy to collect, uh, and they, they they visit all the, these colony worlds that have different types of Transformers, like Velocitron and a bunch of other planets and stuff like that. So it's a combination of those, as opposed to, hey, Maximals and Predacons uh, are both descendants of Autobots and Decepticons. Instead of descendants, they're treated as more of like a different colony world, which was an interesting take. And it kind of suspended my disbelief for a second because I was like, okay, how are they gonna fit two generations on screen? Yeah, and the easy answer is they don't treat it like two generations. They treat it like, oh, they're just different. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're just a different subspecies of Transformers or a different uh, colony of Transformers as opposed to uh, Autobots, Decepticons, and they hinted that the Predacons were out there as well, that they were their own faction that had been kind of displaced. Scourge had a Predacon insignia on on his shoulder, so that was, that was pretty, it was a pretty neat homage to all the different generations of uh, tr that have been watching tra Transformers. They had a whole diff whole bunch of different insignias uh, implying like, hey, like, you know, these guys are out there somewhere, you know, but they didn't really go in depth into anyone except the Maximals, which was pretty cool. Okay. They limited the story and I was just like, okay, like this is neat. It's self-contained. They didn't have everybody. They, they didn't have uh, Rat Trap. He would have been really cool to see in the movie. Uh, Rat Trap with his his wit and kind of uh, snark. He always made me laugh in the show. He wasn't in there. I guess it would have detracted from Mirage, who was supposed to be kind of the quirky guy and the quirky funny guy. But you know, Rat Trap wasn't there and Tigertron wasn't there, which is kind of disappointing because they, they kind of took the Air Razor and Tiger Hawk dynamic and shifted it to be more like Optimus and uh, Air Razor. Where I kind of had a dynamic going, which is just kind of strange. It's just kind of weird. As someone who's a fan of Beast Wars, it's just kind of weird to me. Yeah, you know, and I know that they they were friends, but like it, it just it, it kind of seemed like they were implying more. But regardless, the story starts off in kind of the early '90s, like maybe '94. Wu Tang Clan and all these really <laughs> really nice hip hop groups. That's really when uh, hip hop was in its what's in it's the zenith like the really golden age of uh, of hip-hop and soundtrack for this movie was just all of your favorite 90s hits favorite 90s hip-hop hits just lots of uh <laughs> lots of really good music for all the 90s kids out there a lot of stuff from my childhood that i heard i was like dang bro that took me back <laughs> i saw the kid with the wu-tang poster up there i was like wow yeah i saw them live in concert and i still have the video on on one of my channels so feel free to check it out but yeah like there was so much of that just homage to like a lot of 90s stuff and the soundtrack as well soundtrack was was banging even though if i believe it was set in 94 but they they had some music from 96 97 but this kid is looking for a job he's out there actually trying to help his mom and his little brother out trying to help them best that he can and eventually he and his, his friend decide that it would be a great idea to steal a car. <laughs> and the car turns out to be a little bit more than what he bargained for. And the car turns out to be Mirage. 
So Mirage is instantly one of the uh, more likable characters. He's kind of taken the place of Bumblebee, so to speak. But Bumblebee is still a G <laughs> in this in this show. Overall, I feel as though the the graphics were were all right. From a graphics perspective, I felt like the fights were believable. Maximals were not as not all of them were as fleshed out. Kind of suffer from the the same syndrome that a lot of the Dinobots did, and just being kind of mute background characters. Even though you want them to talk, you want them to say something, you want them all to just like to um, speak, but <laughs> they're, they're not, like, I think Cheetor says one line in the entire sh the entire movie, which really kind of had me upset. So that's kind of a, a detractor. They kept the wokeness down to a minimum for me, so I, I guess that was, that was pretty good. Uh, I mean, the only point of... <laughs> Really, where they tried to to answer stuff into there, I guess, was with, oh my God, um, why do you have a Spanish accent or something like that? But that's that's the only really big point that I noticed where they where they started with their whole, oh my God, don't stereotype me, oh my God, no. yeah, I, I I wasn't trying to see that. It kind of made me roll my eyes a little bit, but that's about it. So music, I would give a five out of five. Story, eh, I, I guess it was all right. It was worth it just to see Optimus Primal and Optimus Prime on the same side fighting against bad guys together. But the characters are kind of bound together after they try to steal one of the, the transwarp drivers for the Autobots. So the transwarp drive in Beast Wars, that was, if you're a Beast Wars fan, you know what it is. So transwarp drive allows you to bend time and space to travel to travel light years <laughs> in a short fraction of time so it could be like they could be any place at any time so basically if they gave unicron if they gave unicron transwarp technology it would be the end of all things he could be anywhere at any time having an infinite number of worlds to devour and destroy <laughs> and the universe would be fucked it would be royally screwed uh yeah, promise helped them all. So they had to steal the shard. Got into a huge fight with Scourge, and you've seen the clips by now. I mean, it's pretty, it's pretty dope movie in terms of fights and all that. But Scourge was just crazy powerful for no freaking reason, and the, and you're like, oh yeah, wait, he's powered by freaking Unicron. <laughs> but it, you would think, oh wait, but isn't Optimus, isn't Optimus Prime powered by the Matrix, which is a part of Primus? So shouldn't he be on like even terms with him? Yeah. But yeah, he eventually got his his get back at Prime, at um, Scourge. The movie was I mean for me it satisfied me. The whole little romance between the two characters, I mean I guess it was cute. They both bonded quite well on screen. I felt like the chemistry between the two main actors was was pretty phenomenal. The fact that Noah, no that's the main character's name, Noah. Uh, Noah was a, it's kind of ironic because it goes with the whole animal theme and how long it took them to, to think that up. When Noah goes to fight or help, uh, help the Autobots fight off Scourge at the Transwarp driver thing, I, I thought that was, that was a really, like, hype moment. Like, <laughs> that moment was so hype. I felt like the graphics in some scenes could have been better. I feel like there's been a slow deterioration in the quality of CGI lately. Like, to me, it's, it was just, maybe it was a stylistic choice, but to me it just was noticeable. Like, movies from 10 years ago look better than movies from today, you know? And it's, it's a weird, it's a weird spot to be so technologically advanced, but the graphics look terrible. <laughs> I mean, okay, the graphics weren't terrible, but like, you know, you could tell that some of them, some of the scenes weren't, didn't have as much care put into as others. The scenes with other Maximals besides Optimus Primal and Air Razor were few and far between, if any. So uh, that's one point that I felt could have been improved. I feel as though character development was solely focused on either Bumblebee, Optimus Prime, Optimus Primal, Air Razor and Mirage, and 
Luchador run-ups were just there. They were they might as well have just been set props. They were <laughs> they weren't there. And the fact that they couldn't I, I feel like the fact that they couldn't they couldn't just bring back the old actors, the old voice actors for the Beast Wars characters, that would have been so hype. Like that would have been just so hype, bro. Like I like God, uh, like I have all three seasons of Beast Wars on DVD sitting right here. I have the complete the complete series of Beast Machines sitting right here in my room. On DVD, four disc collection. I have basically every uh, every Beast Wars figure you could imagine. And the fact that they did not bring back the original or for whatever reason they couldn't bring back the original voice actors from the show is criminal that is criminal and I, i'm just like bro you couldn't bring oh man oh just oh it would have been so dope i i i, I can't imagine how how hyped some of these fans must have been like dog oh huge missed opportunity and they could have had so many other characters there show up and wanting to scrap with scourge at the end like when when there were like the final fight scene was good but it could have been so much better and you know i, I feel like like noah and him fusing with the exoskeleton of, of mirage that was really cool they, they did something like that back in the 80s where they had like Sam wearing a Transformers suit, like the Headmasters and stuff like that. Uh, they they did stuff like that back then, but it wasn't like like he he and a Transformer were actually fusing into one person, you know, the, which was cool. That was probably the best part in that fight. But the fact that oh man, could you imagine how much better it would have been if Megatron, like Beast Wars Megatron, came out of nowhere and was wanting smoke with Scourge? <laughs> <laughs> because I can see the Predacon labels, uh, the Predacon logos that he had ditched onto himself. So I'm guessing the Predacons want beef with, with Scourge as well because he destroyed everything. You know, he and, uh, and Unicron destroyed, destroyed everything. So if there is another Beast Wars film, they better bring back the original for all the voices. I don't care. Bring back Gary Chalk. Bring back, uh, I know David Kay is doing what Mar he did the eternals marvel which i i just sorry bro you were associated with that trash but yo the, you should come back for the next beast if there is a beast wars movie bro they, they need your your uh you look like you can your villainous voice to, to be led to this character if you're listening to this that's all i gotta say bro like you're 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 the og man <laughs> I like your voice better than than G1 Megatron's, bro. But yeah, it, it was it was a pretty good movie. I can't lie. Uh, if I had to grade it, probably as a Transformers fan, probably four out of five. As a as a regular viewer, probably three point five out of five. As a Transformers fan, it gave me, especially a Beast era fan, someone who was born in the I got to see most of what I wanted to see on screen. Cheetor spoke one line and he sounded like some kind of uh, British uh, like history teacher or something like that. <laughs> he did not sound like Cheetor at all. <laughs> Cheetor is supposed to be an impetuous team. He didn't sound like that. <laughs> that guy, Ian, he did his, uh, he did Cheetor's voice perfectly. <laughs> Waspinator didn't even show up. Dog, this, I just thought about that. I was about to give this movie like props. But then I was just like, dang, bro, all the classic characters didn't show up. All the classic characters that, that any Beast Wars fan would love to, like, be like, yo, this guy was hilarious. Or this guy made the show funny. Didn't show up. They just, I feel like they just put out the people that, that sold the most. <laughs> and then put Air Razor in so she could be the strong female lead. Yeah. Air Razor was cool in this movie, though. Her, uh, her character was pretty fleshed out in this film. I'm just so upset that they didn't take the opportunity to to introduce Cheetor wow. or Rhinox yeah. properly. Uh, Rhinox being the science officer of the Avalon, the, the real kind of 
big threat in the background. He's he's the guy that you that you secretly don't want to mess with. You know, he, he's just <laughs> he's sneak strong and and just really will will mess you up if you provoke him. Like <laughs> I, I didn't see the chain guns of doom, and that's what I was really pissed about. I was like, dang, bro, they really gonna do our guy like that? For those who don't know what the Chain Guns of Doom are, look, look, that, look that up on uh, Rhinox's original appearance in the Beast Wars, bro. <laughs> it became a literal meme. <laughs> it became a meme within the whole Beast Wars community. So this movie got me really hyped because I was show uh, Beast Wars as a kid. Really, Beast Wars really saved Transformers in the 90s. And especially when they were going through that slump, it really kind of opened the new possibilities for, for the series and for the franchise. It took it in a new direction and with the CGI kind of going for it, it really kind of gave Transformers a new life. And who can't appreciate that? I mean, like, it really revolutionized the game in terms of CGI as well being used in, in shows as, as well. So like now CGI is kind of the standard for Transformers shows, but that was the first one. Like CGI was so especially in the 90s, what they were doing back then, it was revolutionary. I mean, like, seeing all your characters in a weekly s series, like, every, new episodes every week, like, dog, I, I mean, complete CGI, it was it was mind-blowing as a kid, and especially in the, uh, in the 90s, it was just like, bro, like, this is, this is a luxury. <laughs> and the figures are, like, show accurate, bro, but, like, to get back on the top of this movie, was I satisfied? Kinda, yeah. I mean, I, I paid for the freaking Optimus Prime popcorn holder, I guess, which is, I guess, pretty cool. It's a collectible item now, I suppose. I got to see some of my favorite characters on screen. Um, I got a decent story about Unicron actually coming from space instead of being the Earth. Whoever thought that Unicron being the Earth was a good idea, it should have been fired. I, I don't know who it was, but it was terrible, bro. It just stopped. Whoever did that, please stop. Uh, just because Primus was kind of unanimously decided to be Cybertron and they modified the continuity that way, because he was Cybertron and I guess it was, uh, what, Energon or something like that? Or I guess it Transformers or Mata. One of those shows, the Unicron trilogy, Transformers. I was like, bro, like, there's no reason why Earth needs to be a Transformer. That makes zero sense. And they've tried this at least three times on three separate occasions in three different continuities, making the Earth a Transformer. It just doesn't work. It does not work. And people are just going to look at you like, bro, like, what is this? Yeah, it does not work. Because it, if you think about it, it's like, bro, so you mean this whole time Earth could have transformed and I would have no idea, like, how to say, what if the Earth transformed right now? <laughs> like we would all be dead. We would be dead. <laughs> we all be dead. It just did, it makes no sense to have Earth be a transformer, and I'm glad that they threw that idea out the window. But it kind of messes with the old continuity, I guess. So what are they gonna do with all those old movies? I don't know. <laughs> Michael Bay should. I mean, he, yeah, he's made some cool action sequences that will go down in history with Transformers. I mean, those those movies had some awesome action. I, that's one thing Michael Bay is good at. But when it comes to adapting the story for Transformers and, like, the lore and stuff, it's just, he doesn't, it, he just doesn't seem to get it. And it just, it just seems to be sort of an afterthought to him. Oh, yeah, by the way, I have to... Make sure these plot points are met, and then I can blow things up and like have people slice dudes in half and, and shit, and do awesome action sequences. Bro, this thing's awesome. But like, yeah, it's. <laughs> I, I feel like that's his thought his thought process when it comes to this uh, franchise. But hopefully, they're moving away from that, moving away from from that, moving into a more lore centered series, you know, more, more accurate series. I hope it's a reboot, honest to God, because it's like everything that they've done so far in those in those movies, those first six movies, I was just like, bro, like that last movie was just so bad. It was so bad. I don't it should just be white. That last movie that Michael Bay did, it was so bad. 
I wanted my money back, bro. That, that was only one of two times that I've ever wanted my money back from the theater. The first time was when I saw Superman Returns. Second time was seeing uh, whatever that was, where the, the, the friggin' Earth was, was Unicron. Um, Cybertron was coming to Earth, but then got like blown up in a, in a portal or something like that. I don't freaking know. <laughs> just, it was so bad. <laughs> it was so freaking bad. I was just like, bro, none of this makes sense. None of that movie made sense. I, I, the first four movies were like peak. But then it was just the last two. I was like, what are you guys doing? You know, what are you, what are you clowns doing? <laughs> like, I, I just didn't understand what they, what they were going for. You know, and part of me wishes this movie, Rise of the Beast, was was just centered around the Maximals, or may, or even if they could have just rebooted everything. My strategy would have just been reboot everything. Okay, the whole continuity, how they got to Earth, should be rebooted to match more with the original. Then after that, you do the Beast Wars. You introduce the Beast Wars characters. Then something happens, they get sucked into a, they use the transwarp drive to get back home, and instead they get sucked into a portal, sending them forward in time instead. <laughs> and they wind up teaming up with Optimus, and then they, they have to get back. They, they go back to their own time, and they're like, oh, wow, they're from the future, that's so cool. But, you know, I mean, I guess that's, that's my idea. I guess that makes too much sense. <laughs> But they, I feel like the, this movie was was a step in a better direction from that final, that last movie, that last atrocious film that Michael Bay did. But I feel like as Transformers fan, it it could there was so much more that could be done. There's so much more that can be done to tie it all together, to tie together the uh, crossover that they have. I'm guessing it's going to be some kind of Hasbro cinematic universe they're working towards. But they've already set up for a G.I. Joe crossover event. So Noah, at the end of the film, um, there's an after credit scene. I guess they're resurrecting the G.I. Joe franchise. But G.I. Joe recruits Noah. So I guess this, I was pretty hype at that. I was like, yo, they're bringing, them, <laughs> they're bringing back G.I. Joe. That's pretty cool, though. So it's going to... I was at HasCon, and when I was at HasCon, they already had this um, this event where they were trying to merge all of their franchises into one universe under one umbrella. And I, I think that was an ambitious idea, and I liked that. I thought that was really cool, and it could happen. Hasbro could be a force if they united all of their, their brands under, but they, have, they cannot make, if they want to do this, they cannot make the mistakes that DC did. They cannot make the mistake of DC rushing everything oh my god we got we got to rush it to compete with marvel oh my god oh god guys what you do is you don't you don't start off with the big crossover like that like they did with the they started off with just batman versus superman then straight up justice wonder woman then justice league it's just no it's too fast it was too fast they didn't introduce any of these characters any of these other characters on the big screen yeah Marvel took their time with it. They introduced the Hulk. They introduced Iron Man. They introduced Thor. They introduced Captain America. Then they all came together in one big movie. They took their time with it. And here DC is, was trying to, to, oh my God, I gotta catch up. Oh, I, I guess I got to just rush everything. They, it was so rushed. It was so rushed and disorganized. And I don't want Hasbro to make the same mistake. And this is coming from a fan that loves Transformers, that loves Hasbro products, grew up with Hasbro, grew up in Rhode Island around Hasbro, <laughs> saw the Mr. Potato Heads they used to have all around Rhode Island <laughs> until they got vandalized. <laughs> I mean, like, people people are really ridiculous. Like, they got some, some fun stuff up, you know, and you just want to do that. That's kind of mean, mean and messed up. But yeah, Hasbro... They need to really need to get their act together if they want to to take this approach. Don't rush it. Take your time when you're telling the story, and take your time to weave these webs and to connect everything. 
don't be too slow though i mean don't like oh my god like we'll reveal that to you in like three movies but <laughs> but like you know just introduce one thing at a time you know that's what i that's my advice I, you know, my humble advice as an aspiring film director you know my humble advice but you know it would be interesting to see characters like rom the, the space knight on screen that would be so hype or to see to see a giant crossover gi joe transformers rom a whole bunch of other properties like even my little pony that would be that would be pretty cool i mean i guess but <laughs> I mean, Hasbro, Hasbro owns all these properties, but Bronies are kind of cringe, though. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna cut any Bronies in the slack. Bronies are cringe. Um, so pluses of this movie, I got to see some of the some of the characters I liked, not all of them. I mean, the, the cast was pretty limited, so they kept, I guess, they kept the cast uh, limited for a reason, so people could digest what they were seeing on screen, not have too many characters to be like, oh my god, oh, like, it's too many characters, bro. But um, some of the the old dynamics were gone. Old voice actors did not come back, which kind of disappointed me. Soundtrack was killer. That soundtrack was awesome. A lot of the the cars were pretty cool. Storyline was was decent. They were they got their lick back against Scourge, which is pretty cool. The resolution, so that was give the storyline itself maybe like a three three point five or four out of out of five. Yeah. Uh, the ending where he killed Scourge was pretty cool, well deserved because that dude couldn't was was like I will not die. He was he was death resistant, highly death resistant. And it was just very satisfying to see him finally eat it. So Optimus Prime was G. Optimus Prime will also show. Yeah, you know, and it, it was pretty funny their little interaction between the two. That, that one was mine. <laughs> it's like two brothers fighting. So they seem more like bros than enemies, which is a long way because a, lo a lot of the G1 community back in back when Beast Wars first started, they were very resistant to a lot of the Beast Wars revolution that was happening. They were like, oh, Optimus is a truck, not a monkey, blah, 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 blah. And then they kind of went into depth as to what the Maximals really were, that they were descendants of the Autobots. And... Uh, so on and so forth. So Optimus Primal, really his own kind of character. You could, you kind of related to him or felt his pain when Ape Link died or sacrificed himself for the team. And Optimus Primal just had to like watch and couldn't really interfere when Ape Link died. So it was pretty, it's pretty sad when that happened. Uh, they both lost. Well, they, Optimus Primal lost two people. He lost Ape Link, then he lost Air Razor. So the loss in that film was, was palpable for him. So if you cared about the characters, I mean, you, you really kind of got emotional. I did. I mean, I, I cared about the characters. So it wasn't just a CGI slugfest to me. I mean, these are characters that I that I had grown up watching kind of. And to see them again, see them in a um, in a better light on the silver screen, that was that was amazing. So yeah, it was a whole experience. I feel as though there's still room to bring in more Beast Wars characters in the future. I feel as though with the crossover, the impending implied crossover that, that's in the works, they're really gonna have their work cut out for them in making this a decent kind of film. I just hope they just don't jump from a G.I. Joe Transformers crossover to a whole universe crossover with MLP and freaking uh, ROM, the Space Knight. They would need to introduce these characters to the big screen. Uh, give them their own movie, especially the MLP. Uh, I feel as though My Little Pony deserves its own movie now because they have been also a successful reboot, um, a successful continuation or because they, they, they first came out in the 80s, and so they've been killing it ever since. For the entire Hasbro United universe thing, I think that's that's a pretty dope idea, if it's handled right. Overall, I give this movie like a, like a 4 out of 5. It satisfied a lot of my... Or, you know what, to be more specific, maybe I should up the scale, maybe like 8.5 out of 10. Because it gave me, as a Transformers fan, it gave me everything I wanted. Well, most of what I wanted. I just wish the characters spoke more. Uh, like uh, like Rhinox and, and Cheetor did not speak at all. You know, <laughs> just like, like Cheetor spoke one line. I'm like, dang, bro, they gonna do my guy like that? They gonna do you like that? <laughs> what? And Rhinox, I don't think spoke at all, and that's disappointing. But yeah, other than that, I mean, 
you can rent this movie if you, if you can buy this movie go ahead and buy it man i mean like if you're a hardcore transformers fan and want to see more beast wars or whatever it's definitely the movie for you but if you're kind of new to it i guess you might be confused as to what's happening or you might just not care but um as someone who grew up with this stuff I'm, i think it was a pretty nice homage to that generation and i feel as though everything from the advertising campaigns to the characters and all that it was a nice homage to the 1990s and uh, the generation that grew up watching Beast Wars and Optimus Primal on TV. So yeah, definitely go see this movie. All right, it's your boy Kos. Uh, that's my opinion on the, on this film. Uh, really well done. And if you're a Transformers fan, it'll definitely satisfy you. Unicron was a terrifying presence. They really did did his his presence justice. Though none can probably top the voice of the original. Alright, it's your boy Kos, and I will be back with more videos. God bless, and peace out.